Okay, so we have a public um, meeting. Yes. Request for determination of applicability, Pride Limited Partnership seeks approval of wetland boundary delineation and permission to clear trees, demolish buildings, remove cellar holes, regrade and revegetate the land parcel located at um, Russell Street, Bay Road intersections. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. James Channing for Pride Limited Partnership. Uh, the Arkansas of Pride tonight, and uh, also counsel for Pride. But I defer to John Furman at this point. Good evening, I'm John Furman, the Managing Director of VHB at Springfield. With me is uh, Chris Wagner, an environmental scientist from our Watertown office, um, and we are here for the RDA. Um, I think we required proof of advertising, so I'll give that for you guys multiple okay. copies. Um, if you okay. need it. No, that's all right. Thanks. Uh, yep. So you should have received a, uh, um, as part of uh, the, the RDA, there's a, a, a number of pieces of information that were submitted in that, and a lot of these were uh, submitted um, and included as a result of the enforcement order. So um, I'll let Chris go through the particulars of, of what uh, was included in here. But as a result of the enforcement order, there were a number of things that uh, VHB and Pride were, were asked to, to verify. One of them was the, the wetland boundary uh, on the far side of Old Bay Road. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we appreciate uh, the commission itself kind of jumping through hoops and finding us a uh, peer consultant that would react on such short notice. Um, just as a, as a note, um, we've asked Bill to send us an invoice. Um, he hasn't done so yet, so they want to check with you. But as soon as, if you get that invoice, if you could forward it to myself at Springfield, then we'll pay that right away. Okay. Uh, so as a result of that wetland delineation, we could not, the property owners allowed us to have uh, access to the property, but they didn't want to have any flags hung, so that's why it became important that peer reviewer uh, accompany us. So in the, um, the RDA, you'll see a, a resource map that's updated that actually shows where that wetland line is and the buffer area. Uh, one of the other uh, items that they asked for, which we presented at our first meeting, was the, uh, the flood study. Um, that actually showed where the elevation of the 10-year study. On that same resource source map, um, the lowest contour that is on that map is uh, 120, and it looks like there was a low area in there, so we went back to the original survey, um, and then we plotted actual survey shot elevations that were within that contour. So the lowest elevation, I believe, is... Uh, Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. It's, no, it's, it's like Yeah, it's something like that. It's above 190. It's, 119, it's, it's like two inches over the, the 10 year floodplain. So, uh, based on that, there are, is no 10 year floodplain uh, on the site, uh, which is one of the other requirements. Um, also, in the, uh, the RDA, we had mentioned on the uh, first application that this site was. Um, programmed for full development and we included as one of the attachments in that uh, RDA the full build-out plan that was submitted to the to the MEPA office as a result of the environmental impact report we filed I believe back in like 2008 um, it, it was sent to the town back at that time so um, uh, I'm not sure if the Conservation Commission is um, on that distribution list when it gets sent to the town. It, 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 appears that it, it appears that you aren't because you hadn't seen it yet, but that was taken right out of, out of the MEPA, MEPA document. Um, and I think there might have been one other item that we were supposed to provide, which I believe we did. Yeah, uh, you're thinking of maybe Bill's... Um, Bill's report. Uh, report. Yes, and that's included in the, in the RDA as well. So. Um, uh, unless there are any specific questions uh, regarding the format uh, and the RDA, I thought uh, what uh, might be a good starting point is to have Chris kind of go through his, start with his field walk with Bill, um, talk about how he uh, located the wetland uh, line between the two, how we located it, physically located, brought it onto the, the plan, and then talking about how that affects uh, the areas on site. Okay? Sure. 
So uh, yes, I, I visited the site with Bill, we, uh, and we did the delineation that's shown on the site plan that was submitted. We uh, used uh, we've used a fair bit of uh, soils analysis as well as um, hydrological indicators and uh, uh, looking at the plants that were growing there. It's a fairly steep slope, as I'm sure everyone knows, at the you know to the south of Old Road there, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> so it wasn't a particularly difficult delineation. There's a lot of um, flipping soils that have built up there, but there was a pretty clear um, distinction as to where the soils turned hydric, and there really wasn't much um, debate amongst Bill and myself as to where the appropriate delineation should be. So wherever we found a point, <clears throat> I had a handheld GPS device that has um, pretty good submeter accuracy, and so I just located the points and uh, John was able to bring them in and, and put them on the plan, put the 100 foot buffer on them. And uh, Bill, I'm sure you saw Bill's report that's included in the RDA. Uh, we had some, some photos of the site. Um, you know, low, lower down below the wetland line, there's still some, um, some areas that were frozen over that, that you know, it, it appears there's very little actual ground cover there. So, um, some of those areas probably see some some pretty you know um, significant floodwaters you know over the course of the year. Um, but again, it was a it was a pretty distinct um, line and a pretty uh, a fairly fairly easy delineation for us uh, to to agree on. So could I interrupt for sure. one second? Just uh, regarding the the GPS and the uh, and the locating. Um, just to ensure that um, you know they came in correctly on the on the AutoCAD file, uh, Chris had made a previous visit out to the site and he was locating uh, items for us, and he had located a number of features that were included on the survey, utility poles. There was a highway marker with that same GPS unit. So when we merged those two files together and then brought them into the survey all those reference points lined up. So we're fairly confident that the wetlands that we had located in the field line up with what is present uh, on the mm -hmm. site. Um, so as far as the, uh, the additional field work goes, I, I did in, in a report that's included in the RDA, um, the commission had requested additional information on potential wildlife habitat uh, or wildlife habitat features that might have been included in, in the site. <clears throat> so I have a, um, you know, a, a memo letter that's included that describes uh, not only the rare species uh, observations uh, that I went to the site originally for, which is in September, uh, to look for uh, evidence of green dragon or suitable habitat for that rare plant green dragon. But also, um, I made I added um, several paragraphs on potential wildlife habitat features on the site, and you know the the majority of the the western half of the site, which was the, the more vegetated half, um, is a, a you know a, an overstory of uh, several trees. Some of them were native, some of them were introduced. There's some Norway maple in there, um, and um, you know several other. Several other trees. There's some catalpa in there, and uh, some some basswood, and that was over, um, you know, a, f a fairly scrubby understory um, of some other um, shrub. Sort of, uh, some of them were invasive. Some of them were more opportunistic shrubs. There's some multiflora rose in there. Some uh, some bittersweet, some smooth sumac as well. Um, again, a mixture of native and uh, invasive plants. But there wasn't really. Uh, of much diversity or um, much in the way of good habitat features that you would expect to see um, in, a, in a well you know developed site there weren't um, yeah. large cavities there weren't dead snags and there were no water features there so there really was no interaction between um, you know the, the plants and the and, and any and any water features that might have uh, been suitable. So um, the again the, the results are 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 in the, are in the report, but uh, there really wasn't a, a lot to report. It's a, it was a fairly again a, a sort of a scrub shrub 
kind of an area with um, with you know several degraded areas and some some fill piles in there as well. So uh, there weren't a lot of there weren't a lot of habitat features to speak of in, in the site interior. Uh, on the um, the resource area map um, that is uh, under attachment uh, D in the NOI, I mean in the uh, RDA. So you can see it's an 11 by 17 plan. Uh, what we've done is we've outlined in red the elevation 125, which is the floodplain line. Mm -hmm. And if you were to refer to sheet C10 of the notice of intent that we had filed, that's the one of, of uh, floodplain. I have reduced scale copies of that C10 if you need me to pass those out. I have those. Um, I'd like to at least look at them. Sure. I, I didn't bring up the whole plan set. Yep. Um, and uh, also on that resource area map, you can see the wetland line right here that mm -hmm. we had uh, located with GPS, mm -hmm. and then we offset that uh, 100 feet. I have a copy of that survey on here as well. Um, and there's uh, the, the 100 foot buffer line, if I can borrow somebody's resource map, um, just clicks into the property in this little area here. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, uh, we, we ran a poly line around that between the property line and that limit line, and it's approximately six square feet um, of, of buffer zone on the property. It's, it's very, very minor. Um, it's also located outside of the two floodplain um, areas that are within the, the site, so it's truly just an, an upland area. What is that little area there? Um, I'm trying to follow. If, if this is the property line, is this the edge of pavement and this is just side of the yes, road? Yes, th this is the edge of pavement. The, so the pavement is between these two lines, here and here. Yeah, here and here. This right. line and yeah. that line is what be, would be considered the right of one line. Okay. Okay. So on the, um, I, I talked to Janice uh, earlier today just to see if there's anything that we should bring tonight. Um, I want to make sure we had everything we needed. Mm -hmm. So we brought a copy of C10. Mm -hmm. and, and we did this because this was what was filed in with the original NOI. And uh, Janice uh, was actually uh, thought it might be good to talk about the floodplain mm -hmm. and where it was and where it was proposed to be as a result of the notice of intent. Um, <clears throat> normally, you see the foot by foot calculations that you have. And those are right at the bottom of the page. So you can see uh, right there, this is the existing mm -hmm. uh, floodplain calculation. Uh, the next box over in the middle is the proposed that was uh, with the notice of intent. And then the third box is actually the comparison. So um, if we were to go ahead with the grading plan that was included in the notice of intent, you would end up with uh, approximately 15,400 uh, cubic feet of additional floodplain area. So, um, on a, to be conservative with that, because you know we are looking at uh, grades and we're looking at things that were you know located electronically, um, we excluded uh, the buildings or the portions of the buildings that were in the floodplain. Um, and there's two ways, two two lines of thought that you could do that. So, if you include the buildings in there, and then you assume that the water goes into the the building and it it, it floods it. Um, when we do the final calculations, we do that. We have to do that same same calculation, but because the buildings don't have foundations in them, they're slabs on, on grade. Um, it's very difficult to account for that floodplain because you're basically just digging a hole. So if you exclude those buildings, you go around and you assume the water doesn't go into it, and then on your proposed, you do the same thing. You're talking apples to apples, not uh, apples and oranges. You're, you're talking on the, on the same calculation. So when you look at the buildings, there was only uh, two buildings that were in the floodplain. It was this one here and this one here. So the finished floors are above the floodplain. It's just the, the, the basement area that's down below it. Right, but the, the, if this did flood, the basements would most likely they, have. They would take water, yes. Right. Yep. Okay, um, just, we have a dilemma here because you have a notice of intent 
before the commission. And many of the things that are in that notice of intent, you have now put in your RDA. We can't have two open at the same time. Um, the RDA that we requested you to file was for specific things, and you've included a lot more. Um, I mean, I honestly, under an RDA, do not feel that grading um, is appropriate. Mm -hmm. under that um, because you are physically altering an area and even though if you go out and survey it um, you were you're still altering the area and that is can't be covered under an RDA um, so I don't think at least from my perspective the rest of the Commission can chime in um, I don't feel comfortable looking at everything you're requesting under the RDA because you do have a notice of intent mm -hmm. and your notice of intent did include um, clearing, grading, and removal of the buildings. So um, we're going to have to figure out how we will mesh those two together, what will be and what won't be sure. in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if I add something so on the RDA um, for the grading that we requested um, uh, we, we don't have a specific grading plan we're reacting to the, the tree cutting and the pulling of the stumps so what we tried to um, uh, put in the narrative of the RDA was how to basically get back to the plan that we had proposed so the, the trees are cut um, and the brush is there you know so we could we we're looking to kind of clean that up uh, further in the, the RDA we had asked that we you know remove the, um, the debris that's left in the cellar hole and fill the cellar holes so that they're they're flush uh, pull the stumps uh, and then backfill up those holes with uh, the top so just to the area of the grade and then back drag it without actually doing any excavation and then seeding it um, so right. this time of year though Right. Trying to do any type of seeding is. We rate. We rate. I mean, it's well, e even pulling the stumps right now is right. impossible. Everything's frozen. Right. Yep. So, so what we, we realize though that the back dragging will have some some impact on the grading, but it's not as obtrusive as pushing. You're 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 pulling. So what we offered in the RDA is that we would have it resurveyed, um, and then we have the contours that are shown on the existing condition survey before any work was done. Uh, as a baseline, that's your your base floodplain elevation. Um, after back dragging, we have the survey. We can compare the two, and then we can see where we stand with respect to floodplain, and then make adjustments for the notice of intent. Yeah, uh, I mean, um, personally, because of the way this evolved, um, my feeling is, you know, clean up the brush that's there. Um, not sure, I think we need a little more discussion about cellar holes and things no, like yeah, that. Yeah, that's and then, point. but at this point, I don't see removal of stumps, mm -hmm. pulling them up. Yeah. Um, we, we will do whatever the commission would like us to do to stabilize it. What's in the cellar holes right now? The cement's still there? The, s the slabs are still there. Yep. And then the walls are there? Yeah, I think. Uh, the out on the floor. Yeah, yeah I haven't uh, seen the walls. I think they, one of them might be cement. I think the other walls are cement block. <coughs> I don't think they're. Well, it, it's still yeah. cement, though. That's got to come out of Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so the intent was to bust everything up and well, not the fill one, it. Where's the one that was in the wetlands? Is it over here? This is the one that's in the All right. Well, how about yeah. these other ones? Is it good just to fill those in and clean, clean the cement out and get them out of there? Well, I mean, that's, that's a nuisance having those things open and having them around. Right. I mean, I... Drag the brush out and fill those holes in, and then we'll wait and see what happens. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything else. It's frozen anyway. That is, right? that is true. I mean, the, the issue is, and this is where we need some discussion as to how we feel about, you know, the cellar hole. Not all of them were slabs because there are some cellar holes out there. I mean... I, I don't think any of them were slabs. I think they all have... Oh. 
foundation. I'm yeah. talking like under the yeah. aquavine and under yeah. the house. And right. that. Yeah. Those, like, those had cellars. I was in them. Like, the right. cement's You're, still in there. It should be dragged out of there and, right. and, and clean fill brought in. Right. Though, something, you know, gravel or something clean, no no junk in it. Yeah, I think the slabs we were talking about were actually like the cellar floors. Yeah. yeah. Full yeah. Of I saw, I saw from right. When I like think of a slab, it's like no. slab, slab on grade. grade. Right. I don't think we had any of those. Okay. I think all the houses those are, are those are every uh, hazard having a, a cellar hole like that open anyways. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be a lot of places they'd be. Yeah. We we did see um uh, they'd be right we after you to clean yeah. it up. We, we have them we have them fenced off, but um yeah, uh, the f person I know was driving by and called me and said that there was somebody on site actually taking things out of the yeah, cycle. So people there. are going they in shouldn't, and wow. shouldn't taking be. stuff and it's yeah, that shouldn't it's a, it's an attractive nuisance at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah, just that should be done. That should be cleaned up. Right. I think of all the homes, I mean, we could do three of them, actually one, two, three, four, five, six of them are located out of the floodplain. <coughs> um, and it's really the two, it's the one here that as the, the floodplain goes around it, and it's mm -hmm. the one in the corner, those are really the only two that are in the floodplain. There's an awful lot of material here, like she said, to digest right now, you know, to look at. I mean, why don't we just start with something you can do now? Yeah. And we'll then come back later and we'll see what we're going to do with it. So the house that's down here, um, I'm sorry. the house that's located down here, that's yes. in the floodplain. Yes. The garage, which listed as the garage. The garage here. The, actually, that one might be a that one might be a slab on grade. Mm -hmm. Yes, that one actually may not have a cellar in it. Why do you want to treat slabs on grade? Just at out, this point, get them out no, of mm -hmm. no. If it's a slab on grade, you leave it until because. There is a notice of intent okay. for this site, mm -hmm. okay. um, and then they duplicated the work in the request for determination. All right. So, so, we're t so then we got one, two house here. Would you have five? I think there's six. Six. Mm -hmm. Plus the in the shed. One, one, two, two three, three motel four, for four five, six. Uh, yeah, and well, yeah. six plus it's the everything pool. except the house plus the and pool. the garage. Yes, the shed. Every, everything except the house and the garage. Mm -hmm. And the garage is on grade. Yep. Well, how's that? What if we just do that? Um, Seems okay. Well, and this is, I mean, the restaurant itself is located out of the 100-year floodplain. Yes. Um, the pool is, out. is outside of it with the house and the one story, I don't know what WF. Wood frame. Wood, wood frame. Okay, wood frame. Oh, so that's all one house right there. Where the, home, where the pool yeah. is, that was the hotel? No, she's looking that's, at the house. That's, that's a house. Yeah. Hotel's okay. over here on this road. Okay. So those are definitely out of the 100 year flood plan. Yes. Um, and what would you be proposing to do exactly there? Um, they would go in and um, uh, with an excavator, uh, peel the walls down um, into the cell hole, then they would actually lift them out, put them in a truck and get rid of them. Then um, you'd have to bust up the slab and they would either do that with jackhammers or the attachment on the end of the excavator, just kind of punch it. And then once it once it's um, broken, you can actually just pick the pieces out. You're not going to bury it. You're going to remove it no, from the no, site. No, you can't. When I, yeah, it, it, burying it's never. A, a it always ideal. comes back to haunt you. Yeah. Yep. Well, with the looking at what you've got proposed in the future for development, yep. potentially mm -hmm. development of the site. Yes. Is there a floodplain map in here somewhere? I thought I just looked at some. Uh, that one has floodplain on it. It's proposed in the colored, colored one somewhere. I just looked at it. I think it's in this big one. Oh, right here. It's, it's after D. It's on C1, C1. after D. Yeah. So uh, if you move, I guess, further in a westerly direction along uh, Route 9, the house that says house number 19, two and a half story, wood frame, yeah. th that one is mostly out of the floodplain. You can see that 125 contour just nips that corner of it, but for the most part, it, it is 99% you know, out of the floodplain. So that's another one that's close to the roadway. We could peel it out and fill it. 
Okay, and how does the commission feel about the cellars being filled? Um, the question that I had was, what does level mean? Does it mean level to the what's there in the site now, or what is going to be level when the future development happens? What's there now? Okay. Yes. And again, my concern is, what are you going to fill it with? Yeah. We don't want to. Somebody has to dig out a septic system, and they're looking for a yeah. place to put this stuff. No, I told. I said to him some about. Gravel, you know, good, yeah. clean, or gravel, good, good, good clean gravel. Clean fill, yeah. 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 No, no rocks and no stumps or anything yeah. like that. Right. That. That's typically there's a few things that uh, we, write, we would write a specification for this, and, and we would use uh, common fill, um, which would just be um, uh, regular fill, not a gravel, but it wouldn't have any large boulders in it. Mm -hmm. And then whoever would be bringing in the fill would be, would be required to certify that it was clean, it was not um, hazardous material, and right. it has a clean bill of health because we right. don't want that being brought into the site as well. So there's, uh, most of the construction contracts nowadays require that certification so that the hazard material just doesn't get moved around from site to site. Mm -hmm. So we'd be using good clean fill. Good. So you, don't, you don't want them grinding up any of this stuff. And yeah, no, 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 all over, all over street sweepings are no, no, yeah, just, no, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm on the brush. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. sorry? I'm on the brush. Just oh. clean it up and get it out of there. No blowing it out or, or right. grinding no, it up no and spreading blowing. it. Right. Just okay. everything, pick it up that you can yeah. and get it out. Chip it in a truck and whatever, just get it out of there. Okay. Stumps or grading. Um, and then this other stuff, we'll have to look at this. Right. And we, you're we going need time to have to, look this to over. tie this in and do the notice of intent. Sure. I mean, the, I think the determination. So with a, we're looking at the, a determination. Um, so we have, you know, under the positive that it does hit a positive that um, it is an area subject to protection, so we need a notice of intent. We have a notice of intent with us. Um, the boundary delineations we could um, we could confirm. Um, so we could confirm the floodplain elevation. Uh, and I guess the, the buffer zone. Because we yeah, and the wetland, <laughs> and the wetland line from flag one to twenty, and that then sets the buffer zone. Yeah. So, so yeah. when you're saying confirm, you would go to the site and look at them, no. or well, just uh, Bill has already there. okay. Confirmed. I just was going to remind you that there's nothing right. there; they wouldn't let right. us. Anything. No, Bill has already confirmed the boundary and uh, oh, that's been served on here. And you guys are pretty good. You do you do work ahead of time because under where it says completed work, you did you you saw that right? That must have been a typo, right? Yes, yes. it was a typo. Yes. Okay. <laughs> See, I read these. <laughs> um, there is uh, one wrinkle, I guess, if you would, that came today via email uh, from Natural Heritage. I'm mm -hmm. assuming that you have seen that. Yes. So um, I don't know what the I handed one out today. Yeah, when they got here. So while um, the uh, we were, we provided them with a copy of the of the RDA, and uh, uh, Chris has been trying to get in touch with Misty May, um, but apparently this got shifted to another reviewer, uh, Laura. Ms. Dan's been sick. Yes. So um, so while they confirmed that um, the actions that we took do not result in a take, um, it, they are still concerned that there may have been some habitat in rare. Uh, or not rare, but some habitat impact. So they're requiring a MESA filing. So Chris is uh, going to initiate that tomorrow and, and get that filed for them. But Can you just explain to the commission what a MESA filing is? And the people. Right. Sure. And oh, I, sure. Chris. Sure. Uh, right. So we, ha we uh, were requested by Natural Heritage to submit a checklist under the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act. Uh, which is basically a, an application for Natural Heritage to review and issue uh, a determination uh, as to uh, impacts to the, to the site, birth, uh, for rare species or uh, 
rare species habitat. So we received that letter today asking for that, um, for that application to be filed. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll have to submit the checklist along with the, the, the filing fee that describes the project. They have, uh, I believe, 60 days to uh, review and issue their determination on that, whether or not there would be any um, impact or potential impact. Mm -hmm. So uh, while the filing of the MISA permit is not a problem, we'll get that done. The last statement in their letter is, it says, no soil or vegetation disturbance work, clearing, grading, or any other activities subject to the filing may be conducted anywhere on this project site until the division has completed its meets of review. Mm -hmm. So that the, the things that we're talking about, filling the foundations, dragging out the brush, that's on hold until we hear back from that. Right. But if we choose to issue the RDA to allow some of that work to be done, we can do that with the contingency that you wouldn't be able to do it until you had that clearance and a copy of that clearance is submitted to us. Um, so I, I'm going through and I'm looking at all of and the possible determinations and this one will both have positive and negatives in it um, because uh, because there are, there is work in the area that mm -hmm. is not subject to anything outside of the 100-year oh, okay. floodplain. Mm -hmm. That would be the negative. So, and I, where's the plan that shows, do you have a plan that shows the species area? Is that in here too? I was looking yeah. for that too. I in the RDA? No. No, no it's in the southern half, yeah. but I assume you have to do the whole yeah. parcel or Did you, with it. But I thought you saw, you showed us a. I'm uh, sure I have a copy. I don't think that we included a copy in the, no. in the RDA. Uh, Is it in okay. this set? I thought I saw uh, it. Uh, it's in the Wilson uh, tent. tent. So I think that's this set of plans here. Yeah, I think it was a separate thing. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, that's the one I'm looking for. Right. Okay. So, right. So, um, the, yes, right here. The areas, in, again, the areas that are not subject, and Janice, correct me, if it's up here, does natural heritage? I don't. I mean, I would I don't get, know in this case. Right. I mean, natural I can heritage. I confirm with Lauren yeah. when I talk okay. to her. It, it, it does, a question yeah, it yeah, it does specifically say, yeah. uh, or filing may be conducted anywhere on this project site. Okay. So yeah. that tells me that the whole site is. Okay. So we can, we could authorize um, the work outside of the floodplain. Um, that would be most of the buildings, the foundations, except for this one down here. Um, with the RDA, but any type of grading, stump removal, anything along that line, you need to make sure you revise and redo the notice of intent and I don't know, I mean, I think the commission would prefer that you have a full build-out plan mm -hmm. um, in the notice of intent so that it doesn't have to keep being piecemealed and we can look at all the impacts at once. Um, so the notice of intent would have to be revised to include that. Is it easier um, to revise that notice of intent or to withdraw and resubmit? Um, does it matter? Is it's, it it's easy. Well, if you withdraw it and resubmit, you have another filing fee. Yeah. Um, if you revise, um, we have an open file, and then that way we just keep working with what we've got, and we can show, we have the ability to show the progression of what's occurred on the site. Okay. Um, okay. So, Let's, so let's try and 
So the commission, um, are people okay with removal of brush? Not stumps, not regrading. Once they have MISA approval. Of all the cut material. Of the cut material only. Mm -hmm. And once the approval is given, sure. Yeah. Okay. So we can remove brush. <laughs> After, but approval right. is they have 60 days right. to act on it. Yeah. Start when, up to oh, yeah. 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 so, so when did that get when did that clock start ticking? The clock has yeah. not started. Yeah. Oh, okay. they, Six days from their determination that they've received a complete application. Okay. 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 So remove the brush. Um, what else? Cellar holes. Fill the cellar holes. Can we not do that? that? Bordering land subject to flooding. Yeah. Existing grade, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so all the cement and all the junk out of the cellar so you don't dig them up again. Outside of the under here. Yeah. All okay. everything out of there, nothing staying in the bottom. Okay. So cellar holes outside. Clean fill. Land, subject to flooding. Um, clean fill. Common clean fill or common fill. No. Mm -hmm. To existing finished floor elevation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say to existing grade, etc. Because we don't want to finish floor. Finished floor would okay. be higher. Particularly on one of the houses, it's like three foot higher than. Yeah. Feet. We'd end up with a mound there. No, we don't want that. Adjacent. Yeah. Um, so the one to try compact. Just stay fenced. Yes. Are you going to try compacting any of that, or are you just going to? Let it They'll compact it because if we yeah. do end up having something there, um, just even with right, the, so we get the it right, trap, we get it right to where we want it. Yeah, the, the okay. traffic that runs on it, you'll end up with it all right. be sinking. Right, so, so we're we're really filling compact. it again. Okay. okay. So the brush, the cellar holes um, outside of the bordering land subject to flooding. Mm -hmm. um, what is the name of that one that we can't do anything with? Does that have a number on it, that house? It's one that we can't do anything. No. Let's, let's give it a n name or a number so we know what we're talking about. It's on a separate. Is it on a one separate? way on the west. It's a separate parcel. You, yeah, if you Thomas, look at yeah, Thomas, Thomas House, let's just call it Thomas the Thomas House. Property. Yeah. yeah. That's the one. We have to have a name that we can just refer to. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's Thomas what it says. We'll yeah. just call it the Tanya House. Tanya yeah. House. Yep. Two story deal. Oh, yeah, Tanya House. Uh, Tanya. Um, and the garage, right? And the garage. Yep. And you said that, I mean, the building's gone, and typically a garage is a slab anyway. So, yes. Um, but you said okay. to leave the slab right. for now. Right, yeah, just leave eight. the slab for now. Yeah, because yeah. that'll be, you're going to, to take, get rid of that slab, you've got to break it up, pull things out, okay, and not the garage. We don't want any chips or junk anymore, right? Right. Everything out of it. I'm assuming all the hazardous waste has been properly taken. Whatever there was in the building is all taken care of. We're not going to find anything in the cellar holes. Uh, no, nothing's in the cellar. Yeah, that was done before anything. We cleared that out before we even got a demolition permit. Yeah. Okay. okay, so any brush will have to be chipped and removed off site. I'm assuming, I'm assuming well, you're not going to. off site and chipped. Yeah, just just get it out of there. Well, if they chip it, thing. typically they chip it into, into a, a truck. truck. Okay, as long as that's right. yeah. done. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. We can be specific. So, the brush is chipped. No removal of stumps. Not yet. Let's wait till we get permission. Slides. Well, no, the stumps they have would be come under the notice of intent. When they get an order of conditions, because that'll be grading and yeah. everything else. Okay. You want slabs here, right? Um, that Keep slab's going to stay. Okay, yep. no removal of stump yep, slabs. Okay. No stump, no, no Thomas property, no garage, uh, no stumps. So the garage slab. Mm -hmm. um, that, no there, there's a second garage that's out of floodplain? Which I believe, is. I believe it's this one right okay. here. Okay. But, I, but I don't, I'm oh, yeah. unaware of what that is whether that has a basement or not. I, I don't recall what it looked like. So the garage in the middle. <laughs> so the, middle of the, the 
young. If if it's young, easier young just to young say young. to leave it, well, we can deal with it later. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just let's, leave it. let's leave it. Yeah, we'll just deal with the saw holes that we can. Okay. We'll keep it simple. Okay. So no garage slabs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no stumps. And then we would be requiring a copy of the MISA determination mm -hmm. and revised plans and information submitted with the notice of intent. So on the uh, on the updated notice of intent, um, mm -hmm. the the reason that the project got stalled was because um, the tenancy pulled out. Um, so, um, from what I understand, there, there's not been an interest in that project yet. So we can do what we've done on the notice of intent is kind of speculate what that may be. Um, and when the uh, an actual tenant comes up, mm -hmm. you know, we can just do a, a, an update to that. Right. I mean, we, we have in the past when we've had developments like this had a footprint or a building envelope. Mm -hmm. Okay where it was in there and when the actual building comes in, you would submit that to the commission. Okay, all right. Um, and are you going, do you need to go before planning board? Yes. Okay, so have you started that? Internet? We have not. Okay. okay. Stopped it. Okay, something tells me planning and this is not, this is in floodplain, but planning board may not allow the parking way up here next to Route 9. They, you have a setback on this side, but a lot of times they have a setback for parking too, so mm -hmm. you may need to look at that. Because um, I believe they've had everybody push yeah, back at least 25, yeah. 30 feet, something like that. Yeah. So. With, with the floodplain that we have here, we'll, we'll relook that and keep the buildings up mm -hmm. because we want the floodplain toward the rear of the site where it's closest to the river. Mm -hmm. So we would we would flip that. Okay. So okay. So are you going to revise this plan for your MESA? <coughs> a new a new plan for MESA if you're providing them. The plan that MESA is gonna require won't they won't need this. Yeah, the, okay. they won't, the, the building orientation is not going to be. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. So we are determining, we've determined the wetland boundary as shown on the plan, uh, the bordering land subject to flooding slash 100 year floodplain. There is no 10-year floodplain, so um, so we don't have that. So I was thinking it would still be a positive three because the work, at least some of the work, is within an area subject to protection. Right. Um, that's one. So well, that's area. Right. And this one's work. So, so far we've got a 1, a 2A, and a 3. Um, and I think 5, because that's the bylaw. 4, no. 5 would be the bylaw. And then, as you said, negative 1, I think. Some of the area is not subject to protection. Right? It's outside the bordering line, subject to flooding. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Um, so negative 1. They're going to turn it over. And that would be areas outside of bordering land subject to flooding and buffer zone. Yeah. So, um, and then a two would be no, when you're dealing with foundations. That's not yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're taking those out. Um, there's no buffer zone. Um, no floor. There's no exemptions. Um, 
join with you. So thank you. Okay. Yes. So. Oh, sorry. Would you like to yeah. share? We're, we're just no. We're just talking <laughs> about tell sidewalks. She's a school we're just teacher. Talking about, yeah. <laughs> we're just talking about sidewalks. Okay. Reminding um, about sidewalks that are supposed to be built. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on Route 9. Yeah. Oh. I, I actually think the, on the development plan, we were um, putting in crosswalks, yes. improving the light so that there's right. no pedestrian crossing there right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Sidewalk the sidewalk. Yeah. 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 Which has nothing to do with conservation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's All right. Us before. So we will <laughs> need a. This is a complicated determination. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> so we have positive one, two A for wetland boundary, bordering land subject to flooding, slash 100 year floodplain. Uh, positive number three, and a five, which is the bylaw, and then a negative number one. Um, because there are areas outside of the bordering land subject to flooding. Wow. Can I read that back? <laughs> <laughs> Got it memorized? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the determination. Um, you will have to, and then again, we will add in there what we discussed earlier, which is removal of brush. Nothing can go happen until after you get your MISA determination. MISA determination has to be submitted to us. Um, cellar holes outside of bordering land subject to flooding um, can be uh, knocked in, removed, and then a holes filled, common fill to adjacent grade. No work on the Thomas property or the garage slabs. Um, brush has to be chipped into a truck and t removed off-site. No stump removal. Um, and then you will need to submit revised plans and information for the notice of intent. I think uh, I may have missed it, but filling the cellar holes with the same fill? Yes. Yeah, that's okay. it. Is it there? Yeah. Yep. 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 Cellar holes outside of the bordering land subject to flooding, uh, common fill to adjacent okay. grade. Okay. Just stay so moved. Yeah, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> they do that to me all the time. Yeah. Okay. Do we, okay, we have a motion. Do we second. have a second? second? We have a second. No way I'm going to repeat that. Thank <laughs> you. Plus one, plus two. Okay. <laughs> do, we, do we have any further discussion? That's it. Okay. And we're going to be very specific. Nothing beyond what we've discussed. Um, we must get your order of conditions before you move forward with any additional work. We would like to see the full build out addressed in the notice of intent, revised plans. Very good. Okay. All right, any further discussion? Mm -mm. All right, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, any abstention? Mm -mm. Passed. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, sign. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be hounding everyone all week. Thanks. That was the determination of the company. Don't be able to continue to run. Can it lie? Hmm? It's inside, but that was the request for determination. Maybe you'll have to come out with it. That's true. You can't fake that. You know. I'll put eyes and get that and tell you right away. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really? That's weird. Are you We're in, in the middle? No, I wish I was. <laughs> We're in our right mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what else do we have coming up? We have a vote on anything? Uh, right. Let's see. I'm going to split as soon as I can right. get out of here. Okay, so we need to continue the notice of intent for Pride um, to. What do you want? March eighth? Do you want to go to April? What? I, well, if we look at, we can't do anything on site until uh, Mesa acts, which is sixty days. Uh, I would say sixty days gets uh, you to. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily wait the entire six days because they yeah. often move a lot faster than that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, I would say April. 
you want to go to your phone? Yeah, because we can always continue it again from April okay. if we're not. It, is it a problem if we say March 8 and then uh, continue it again that night? If uh, things no, just don't align. No, you've had, what, but, four or five times? Right. Yeah, <laughs> if, if that's not a problem, then, then let's do that, and we'll, okay. we'll be diligent okay. about uh, updating the... Continue to March 8th. Yep, so is that a motion? Yep. I'll second. second. No, I said, is that a motion? Yeah. Yes, of course. Yes. yes. Okay, <laughs> motion, second. Uh, no further discussion? Nope. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. All right, uh, so that one was continued. Mm -hmm.